All right, guys, we have got a lot to get through today, so buckle up. Right, this is the FX Wildcat Mark II Compact, and it's basically a 31-inch version at its core. It's a 31-inch version of the 33 and a half inch standard Wildcat Mark II. So in order to understand and appreciate what's going on here, it helps to have a perspective on how we arrived here. So if you rewind a couple of years ago, FX brought out its Wildcat Mark II. About 18 months ago, I did a full review on the Wildcat Mark II standard, the longer version of this gun, and I'll link it in the description down below, and I would encourage you to watch that first, first so that you can fully appreciate what's going on here. But if you're kind of new to the Wildcat, rewind that 18 months. I'll give you an overview of that full review on the larger version of this gun. Like I said, it's basically, it's 33 and a half inches long. You can get it in 177, 22, 25, and 30. It comes in several stock configurations. You can get it in this black synthetic. You can get it in a, a beautiful laminate. You can get it in a nice walnut. And it comes with a couple of different air reservoirs. For example, if you're shooting the 177 and 22, it comes with a 230cc tube you're seeing here. If you're shooting the 22 or the 25 and the 30, excuse me, it comes with a 300cc tube. It also comes with a couple of different uh, smooth twist X barrel inserts, the regular version. If you're shooting the 177 and 22, it comes with a 500 millimeter, which is what you see in here. If you're shooting that 25 and 30, it comes with a longer 700 millimeter. And that gun's doing all sorts of great things and everybody loves it. So go check out the review. But Ted came along and Ted was like, you know, I really like this gun FX, but can you give us a shorter version? And FX has great respect for Ted, obviously, as do we all. And they responded with the FX Wildcat Mark II Compact, okay? But this isn't just a compact version of the regular or of the standard, all right? This one is available only in 2.5 caliber. This one comes only with the 230cc air reservoir. You get some extras on here, like the pick rail up on top. You get the accessory pick rail. And I think really those are about the differences. You're in the $1,400 price point, just so that you know here. Um, this gun came to me by way of Pyramid Air. The mounts came to me from Sports Match Rings UK. And the scope came to me directly from Hawk. Now, we're going to get into all what's going on here. And, you know... I get to play with a lot of these air guns, and I, you guys have heard me say it before, every once in a while these guns come along where it's really like, wow, that was a really enjoyable couple of days shooting. And I think rather than me try to sell you on the awesomeness of this gun, I'm gonna take you all through it and share with you what I've learned, and maybe you'll arrive there kind of how I arrived there, right? But before we drill down on all that, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this scope. So Hawk is now, you know, sponsoring AEAC, the main channel, AEAC Home. If you're new around here, this is not my primary YouTube channel. This is my little baby channel where I can kind of just have some casual one-on-one -on -one classroom with you guys and sharing and discovery with you guys, if you will. And they've sent half a dozen scopes. And... And, and, I, and, I, and I first saw this actually at RMAC, and what's so interesting about this scope, by the way, sorry, it's their new Vantage uh, 30, it's, you know, excuse me, it's their Air Max 30 SF Compact. And as you can see, it's about the size of a hot dog, right? And what's neat is this gun weighs just 6.2 pounds by itself. All right, compartmentalize that for a second. You know, in an ocean of air guns that are, that are quite obese in our industry, this is just 6.2 pounds. Slap on the scope, slap on the mounts, and now we're at just a feathery 7.8. So what that means is that this scope and these mounts together weigh just 1.6 pounds. And this is not like a, you know, this is not a value price scope. This is a $330 piece, so... You know, the glass is bright, you don't get the halo distortions, the vignetting around the outside. 
It's nice and short, it's nice and light. The adjustable objective is on the side over here. It does have an illuminated reticle. It's got these beautiful twist off caps. And it's just been a really super nice time playing with this scope. Now, the draw for me to it is how small it is, because if we're gonna go down the path of keeping it lightweight, well, this is a great opportunity to do that. If we're gonna go down the path of shortening, condensing down to just 31 inches, 26 without the moderator on the, on the front, you know, it all kind of keeps in, you know, in that theme. The one caveat is the eye relief, and I'm gonna show you actually what it is so that you guys can see it. The eye relief is quite compressed on this scope, and you're right about there. Right about there is where I'm getting full sight picture. And so, you know, I, I tried this with all sorts of different mounts and I just couldn't get that full sight picture until I went to Sports Match Rings UK offset mounts. They're called the HETO 68C, as I believe the part number. They make them in 11 millimeter dovetail, they make them in Picatinny. These are the Picatinny versions. And as you can see, mounting it all the way back rearward kind of got me lined up with this nice cheek piece and life is good. So before we got into the gun, I kind of wanted to share with you how all that worked, you know, and, and so that uh, you can kind of feel comfortable with everything I'm going to share with you going forward. All right. So, you know, one of the big draws to this gun is obviously it's very light. It's very narrow. It's manufactured by FX in Sweden, so it's going to be a good, high-performing quality piece. But it's also very jewel-like and docile-like in its nature. Like, everything you move on it is very light. It's very feathery. It's like it's gliding on hot oil. So it's got that super high level of refinement you would expect in a gun that just really adds to the shooting experience. Now, you guys will ask me in the comments. You'll be like, oh, well, my Benjamin Maximus does the same thing as far as accuracy. And I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, you know, in the air gun industry, dollars, they do chase accuracy, but they don't so much chase accuracy as they do quality, features, amenity, ownership experience, shooting experience, warranty. There's a three-year warranty on this gun if you buy it here, you know, in the United States. And, and you know, it's just, well, let me just kind of share with you, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it that way. All right. Okay, so this 230cc tube has inside of it FX's new AMP, Adjustable Match Precision, I think is what it stands for, regulator. It's basically a more robust version of the regulator we've had in these FX guns over the years, and it's a little bit bigger, so it takes up more of the air tube. So you've got this 230cc volume tube with this pretty faddish pill bottle like regulator kind of living in the back here. And this is what's so cool, all right? 6.2 pounds or 7.88 as you see it here. This one's in 25 cal if you haven't read the title of the video, all right? And on a 230 bar fill, which is this gun's max fill of that 230 cc reservoir, all right? I'm getting from 230 down to 145, I'm getting 30 good usable shots. What do I mean by good usable? I mean that you can use those shots at 50 and 100 yards because you don't have the wandering or point of impact change because the extreme spread was just 15 feet per second and the standard deviation is just 3.3. All right, so now you're going, oh, well, what's the big deal? There's lots of guns that can do that. Well, maybe, maybe not. But the big takeaway is this gun is doing it pushing a JSB 25.39 grain pellet to an average of 880 feet per second across those 30 shots. What is that? That's 43 and a half foot pound average. Not at the top of the mountain, average, right? Switch gears to this H&N Barracuda, which is a 31 grain pellet. It's pushing these to about 820 feet per second. Now we're up around 46 foot pounds across the 30 shots. Go up and wait again to the JSB 34 grain. It's pushing these to 790-ish. 
Now we're nipping at the heels of 47 foot-pounds, 30 times over, tight extreme spread, tight standard deviation out of a 31 inch, 7.8 pound or 6.2 pound scoped package <clears throat> into kind of like the compartmentalized just that that's enough to really get me excited and i have a feeling that's enough to get a lot of you guys excited too all right <clears throat> now if i'm wrong and i need to continue to lather it on all right let me just demonstrate here for you whoops there goes my crony it's a good thing it's nice and tough we'll get to that all right just listen to this all right for a second that was 47 foot pounds. That's almost 50 foot pounds of energy. As in leave almost 50, arrive 37, 38, 25 yards down range, right? Now you would think there's all this high tech sophistication in this moderator and shroud, which is all OEM by the way, but there's nothing high tech in here. This is just an empty shroud. This is just an empty moderator but there's enough volume in there no fancy ventilated holes or what have you there's enough volume in there to do an extraordinarily good job of swallowing up that 46 47 foot pounds and i would put this gun firmly in the ex extraordinarily quiet category all right like i said over this over the standard version which is 11 millimeter you get picatinny up here which is cool you got a little Picatinny rail down here. I do want to mention this is a dual slot Picatinny down here. And I was a little bit disappointed at FX that my AccuTax would not fit that dual slot. However, the Atlases fit the dual slot. And the UTG, I don't know. I didn't check. It might. <clears throat> but I mentioned that to FX and they kind of did a, aha. Uh -huh. So I have a feeling you might see that go from a dual to a triple down the road, right? The manometer is right there up on the front. It is a removable tube. If I pull the gun out of the stock, that amp regulator is externally adjustable, which means there's an Allen to turn pressure up and down so that you can, you've got to, and you can adjust the hammer spring and these kinds of things. So, you know, you got a great deal of versatility and tunability and compactness and powerfulness and quietness in this package. Now, you know, I ain't stupid. I get that 1400 bucks isn't for everybody. But if, if you're trying to get yourself comfortable with investing that in an air gun, it helps to know, you know, what is that air gun going to do for me, right? So, like I said, there's a 500 millimeter smooth twist X barrel in here that's proprietary to, uh, to FX. It's their new barrel liner system where basically you can change calibers, you can change probes, you can change lengths. You know, the, the, the challenge is if I'm going to change the length of that barrel insert, I'm going to show you all that in a minute, um, you know, then I got to get a new shroud. So I would encourage you to either buy the standard if you want to mess with 177, 22, 25, you know, different barrel lengths, whatever, go down that path. But if you're just looking for an incredibly competent hunter, that won't kind of like annoy you like some other air guns tend to do it's small it's light and dainty everything moves like ooh, everything moves like you know it's just like so jewel like the the cocking the forward cycling the little magazine goes in here it's easy to get in and out it's push in and it's pull out there's no like releases or anything goofy i will say that i put about 300 rounds through this in my learning of it over the last couple of days and I read of a guy who had one of these magazines fly out while he was cycling. That actually happened to me one time in the 300. And, you know, because I read that it happened to him, I thought, well, maybe that's something with this. But now I'm just kind of thinking, maybe I didn't have it in all the way or something goofy. I don't know, because one in 300 doesn't really tell me that, you know, there's something here that needs to be, you know, needs to be uh, uh, addressed, so to speak. But... You know, it's just, it's a lot of gun for the money. So, all right, so the smooth twist. So we all like to keep our air gun barrels clean, or at least most of us do. Um, I always start on a clean barrel when I go to experimenting, when I put in my due diligence and learning the gun and learning what it likes, right? But I also clean the barrel and start fresh, 
you know, when I go out to film the full review, which you'll catch in a week or two over on AEAC Home, the big channel, where I will stretch this gun out to 50 and 100 yards as I do all of them. And so barrel cleaning is kind of important in my world. I like to know I can easily get to it. I like to know it's not gonna be a fight or a struggle. So let me show you how easy it is to service these Smooth Twist X barrels, okay? Oh, that moment of silence is kind of nice after all that talking. All right, so you just unscrew that, you slide it off. I guess as long as we're to this point, I should probably talk about why you see this and why you see this. So this, per because there are always between six and 10 guns waiting here for me to get to to review. It's just the nature of my world, okay? And so this one's been here for uh, a while now, in line, in the queue, if you will. And, <clears throat> Um, the way these used to come is with one inch threads. There you can see them, one inch 20 threads on the back there. And that's what this is. Now these come with half inch 20 threads, all right? So if you were to order this today, it's gonna come with half inch 20 threads on the end here so that you can affix your favorite moderator. I spent a lot of time playing with this one, this Donny FL, when I was doing my experimentation and learning because it's one of my favorites. So. I just wanted you to feel encouraged that you can do the same. The, the OEM configuration is as you see here. Your dealer where you buy it from has the option, do I bring this product in from Sweden with this moderator or with this moderator? But just to let you know, they're all going forward are the half inch 20 so that it's standardized and you can play with what you wanna play with, right? So, so like I said, it's just a big empty tube and it does a great job. There's nothing incredibly fanciful or expensive in here, all right? So what you're gonna be left with is this sort of sleeve, this blued sleeve, if you will, on the outside. And then inside is a barrel that FX refers to as a liner. I always think of the liner as the outside piece, but I guess in Sweden, it's the inside piece. And you got this little plug on the outside here. You give it a little unscrew. This is a 10 millimeter wrench, by the way. Okay, so there it is. It's about an inch and a half long. It just threads out. And then as you can see here, that exposes, right? That exposes that uh, FX liner, or what I like to call a barrel. You just give it a little tug and out it comes, all right? And now I can service my barrel. I can put the rod through there, I can pull patches through there. You know, it's just, it's just kind of an easy deal if I wanna buy a couple of these to experiment and see if one's better than the other. Although guys will tell you, FX has really leveled the playing field across their product line with these Smooth Twist X barrel liners where they're, they've got these machines that make these things so damn perfected, they're like all good. Guys, they really are. And here's the other thing that I found kind of interesting, as long as I got this thing out, um, traditionally, you know, FX as an organization has always designed their barrels and their shooting systems around the JSB brand of pellets. So it's no surprise that the 25 grain worked. It was a little bit of a surprise that the 34 grain worked and the Mark II didn't. Maybe that was me, because I did try the Mark II before I tried these, so maybe I kind of settled into my shooting, understood what the gun wanted as far as holding stuff. But these things were just like very accurate, the 25 and the 34. But here's kind of the big story and the big takeaway, all right? So, you know, one of the complaints that you guys have had, the community, and that I've had, is that, you know, it's fun to experiment and play with our favorite pellets and, and these, these, these liners weren't always friendly to other brands and styles of pellet. Well, I know that they're constantly fine tuning and evolving that, working on slug liners and all this other crazy jazz, but long and short of the, all my rambling here is these, this, this liner, this 500 millimeter guy, whether the 700 will or won't, I don't know, but it's worth experimenting. At 25 yards anyway, absolutely showed a huge big hug and kiss for, for the Barracuda 30, uh, 31 grains, right? So don't be afraid to experiment. Now, when you first pull this out, there's gonna be a rubber O-ring here and a rubber O-ring here. There will be two of them. If you only get one of them, 
One is still inside here. Don't shoot it out. Turn the gun upside down, shake it. You can choose to use those or choose not to use those. It's totally up to you. If you, when I ask FX, they say, well, we put that in there to improve the harmonics a little bit. In every gun that I've received to review for FX, I've always taken them out. And as you've seen, they've been extraordinarily accurate at 50 and 100 yards. So it's one of those deals where I would encourage you to experiment. To me, they get in my way. I don't want to fool with putting them back on. I don't want to fool with fighting them when I pull this out. So I just, I just take them off, all right? So that is how you service your, uh, your barrel. Don't put anything aggressive in there. A little ballast all on a patch is all you need, all right? Just slide it back in there. Screw this guy in. Oh, another little piece of silence. It's like thunderstorming and raining outside. So the, and I got the house to myself. So the calm and the quiet is kind of digging it. All right. So just finger tight and we are not cranking down on this. We're very light pressure until we kind of feel like it just seats lightly. We don't want to be torquing the hell out of this so that we're bowing our liner in there. Maybe it'll bow, maybe it won't, but in my particular natured head, I'm fearful that it will. So I don't, I don't over, I don't overdo that, overthink that. I just basically till it touches and, um, and a little bit more snug, all right? So the gun at 1400 will ship with two eight round magazines and 25 cal because what? We already know the compact comes only in 25, only in the 500 millimeter barrel, only with the 230 cc air tube, and only with the pick rails. If you want other than that, buy the standard. It's just two and a half inches long, longer, and everything else is basically the same. Shroud is the same, moderator is the same as I understand it now. The one I reviewed 18 months ago was a little bit different up in here, but FX, as I understand it, has kind of standardized that. And you can go on to your favorite retailer site, Pyramid Air, and check all that stuff out to see, uh, to see where they are on it. All right? I think that that's about all I want to share with you on this guy. Um, if you're brand, brand new here, it's a dual stage trigger. It is absolutely a gem. It probably breaks at around a pound, pound and a half. I'll get the gauge on it when I get out and do the full review. And it's fully adjustable. So if there's something you don't like about it, you can adjust it to include the height and the cant of that blade face. And, uh, you know, weight is good. Gravity is center. Gravity is good. Nice, short, 26 or 31 inch deal here. Just so much to love. Okay, so let's set that aside for a second. And I know you, some of you guys have been eyeballing this. And man, has this thing been the talk of the town. You know, I haven't been on the other forums, but I've been on GTA and I've read everything you guys have to say about this. This, I've actually had this for a couple of months. I was sent one of the first production units to kind of beta test it, give some feedback to FX. If you don't know Giles of the Air Gun Gear Show, He's, he was kind of like the product manager. FX came to him, I don't know, a year and a half ago. Maybe it's been two years, said, hey, we got this idea. We want to make this little pocket chronograph, radar, Doppler radar based, and we want you to be kind of like head up the project and make it work, make it right, make it what air gunners want. So Giles gave this to me, and, and I've been learning it and playing with it. Um, it does have a downloadable app for Android, which is me. It has a downloadable app for, for iOS, you know, for Apple. Um, as I understand things, the iOS app is much further along or further advanced than the Android app at this moment. However, as of yesterday, Giles tells me that there is a large Android update coming for the app for this. All right, and we're probably with inside of 30 days. He thinks it kind of depends on the developers. Don't hold any of us to that, but that's kind of where we are, where we are on this. So you're in the $200 price point, not the little mini Joby tripod. That's mine. Joby makes this as little magnetic feet, little quarter inch thread at the top, which means there's a little quarter inch female thread in this. You can put it on your favorite bipod, but the way it basically works is it's meant to just sit under the front of the gun like that. And when you shoot, it uses Doppler radar to track that speed of the pellet from muzzle to target. 
Now, I've read of guys having great success with this out to 100 yards. I've only tried it at 25. I have tried it in a fenced in yard that is only about 30 yards across, you know, corner to corner. And it's worked great. No Doppler issues or, um, or reflective issues. I'm using this, the default settings. Where I'm at with it now is on Android 9.0, which is what I have, Pi, I think is what they call it. Okay, right now the app lets me determine velocity and the first or the last 10 shots and that's it okay the idea or you know where this product is going to be shortly is it's going to give us what you know uh, a lab radar or a, or a shooting crony or a pro chrono digital it's going to give us what those give us high low average extreme spread standard deviation apparently it's going to give us foot pounds of energy you know these kinds of things and so I'm still waiting on that before I kind of cast final judgment on here. But at 200 bucks where it's at now and where it should be within 30 days, I feel like, you know, this is going to be a handy tool for us because I know those Pro Chrono Digitals are 150-ish and, the, and the, uh, the Shooting Crony brand, depending on which one you get, can be upwards of 180, 190. The Lab Radar, which is the Cat's Meow, which is what I use exclusively in all of my reviews, you know, you're, you're in the five $600 land then. I did put this up against the lab radar, okay? And I didn't run them at the same time because I didn't want them interfering. But, you know, I had the lab radar and then I had my little pocket crony here and I wanted to see how close this would be to that in terms of accuracy, of measuring velocity. And I kind of got mixed results, all right? And, and what that tells me is I need to set up a, a, a more scientific test. Basically, I took a, a, a 30 shot shot string with the lab radar with this guy from 230 bar. I took a 10 shot shot string from this guy from 200 bar. And interestingly, the foot per second average was within 1.1 feet per second of one another for average, okay? But as you know, an average is an average, right? The standard deviation and the extreme spread was greater with this. So if the lab radar is telling me my extreme spread's 15, this is telling me it's 25. If my lab radar is telling me standard deviation is three, this is telling me, you know, it's six or seven. And so, you know, it's kind of registering those shots like this. So I don't know if that's a function of the firmware with this big update we're getting. I don't know if that means it's sensitive to kind of where it's placed and where it's pointed. I took great care in pointing it and placing it. I was using angle rulers and I was using bubble levels and, and, and it seemed to do just fine about an inch out in front of the barrel like that. Remember, I told you about those magnetic feet on that Joby. <laughs> All right, so, you know, I, I, I just, I'm not there yet as far as being comfortable to make a statement about this. And that's just honestly where I am. Um, I do have the new Crown Continuum that arrived yesterday. I'll be getting to that, I don't know, probably uh, August, September, some, probably September, because there's a lot of stuff in between. All right, and that's probably when I'm going to release my full review on this, because I just I have some more work to do. And to give it a fair shake, I need to wait for that Android 9.0 Pi. Big firmware update to come, and, and then I'll kind of know, you know, where, uh, where I'm at. So I think that I'm going to leave it right there. I mentioned this before. If you're new here, this is just my sister channel. You can catch a full review of this over on AEAC Home, which is the Aragon Exploration and Advancement channel, in a week or two, depending on weather. My plan is to actually go film this weekend, but Florida, June, July, or June, July, August, September is our rainy season, monsoon season, and it, it's tough, guys. Jeez, it's tough. Um, on that, I guess I'm going to share with you now, let the cat out of the bag a little bit. So if you followed my coverage of SHOT Show in Las Vegas in January, of the IWA Outdoor Trade Show in Germany in March, and my interviews with H&N Sport and FX Air Guns and JSB, I alluded then that I had been given invitations to go visit those factories, all three of them, and film them 
and 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 basically just bring you guys in on that world well in the last couple of days those uh, those moons kind of aligned if you will we came up with a date we agreed on numbers and pricing and these kinds of things so in um, um, October end of October after extreme bench rest I am planning on heading over to Europe and hitting up Sweden to do a tour of the FX plant for you to go over to JSB in the Czech Republic bring you through that whole facility and visit H&N Sport in Germany and bring you that whole facility. It'll be kind of three videos, but maybe cross-linked as far as telling the story. You know, I haven't really decided yet, but um, you know, something kind of cool that we can all look forward to and be excited about, all right? Especially with the evolution of FX working so closely with our industry's leading pellet manufacturers, all right, on the development of the air gun slug which is a game changer now 50 and 100 yard platforms are becoming 150 and 200 yard platforms okay guys where these are designed to bleed steam to bleed velocity that slug is not designed to do that so completely different uh, completely different deal okay so so with that let me say wherever you are Whatever you're doing, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I will really look forward to seeing you again in, uh, let's call it, a week or so. Um, circling back, if you are new around here, we host monthly air gun giveaways over on AEAC Home. You'll definitely want to get down with that. <clears throat> and if you want to kind of follow me in my day-to-day, -day, I use Instagram, Hooked on Air, for that. I do tons of pictures and tech notes if you want to kind of get a a good being in there in the trenches with me as I learn this gun over a couple of days, head over to my Instagram, loads of pictures with kind of revelation style tech notes. Then I like to circle back to Facebook after I've done both of these videos, completed my full review, put up a big kind of glamour shot photo pack so you guys can see things in close and share some final thoughts and conclusions over on my Facebook page, which is also hooked on air or air gun exploration and advancement channel. For a lot of you guys, that's old hat, but this little baby channel's picking up steam at about 350 subs a month. So I gotta have these little infomercials in there, in there for them. So thank you, appreciate you guys so much and can't wait to see you again soon.